Hello to all my Biconics Wrestling Podcast nerds and fandom peeps out there, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Beat the Clock TV review for SmackDown of July 14, 2023. As you can tell, I am back from vacation, kind of, because I'm leaving later today, so I'll be gone once again. But we <laughs> we are here. From your vacation. A vac yeah. Honestly, it, it, it was a lot of fun, but coming home was exhausting. Anyways, I am joined by my amazing co-hosts. The three of us are going to attempt to try to review SmackDown in a coherent matter. I'm not putting in a time limit because we've got lots of things to talk about here, but, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. But, of course, as always, I am joined by my WrestleMania partner, M Minnie. Say hey to peoples. And I am joined by my educator partner, the professor. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Oh, gosh, I, miss, I missed you guys. Question mark. <laughs> but granted, though, this episode was better, but you did it wrong. It's one or two out of min one or two minis out of ten. One or two minis out of ten. <laughs> I'm sorry, minis. We, we were using the mini the mini scale on that one. I apologize. Yes, yeah, minis. I was stuck in metric. Uh, I, I, this one was worth reviewing. I I did have a lot of moments to enjoy. But this the same normal clunky what the crap are you doing things came in because I'm sure. This is, I mean, I did enjoy it overall, but it's just, I kept telling, you know, seeing all this damn stuff about the bloodline, it kept making me go. I hope OBS picked that up. <laughs> I really do too. We found it's, the soundboard. It's, yeah, it's back. We're like children that have. <laughs> yeah. I feel like some of us are undiagnosed somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a good episode overall. Better than definitely the past couple times we've had SmackDown, but you know. And they decided to still put a good, you know, sixth of the episode to be video packages of the bloodline. Ooh, we'll get we'll get into that. <laughs> there, so we made up for it. Sure, finally, finally see an, an L and I promo and like actually get to see him in the flesh. Uh, I we had two women's matches. Well, kind, kind of. of. <laughs> Can we really call them matches though? I, I, and we'll talk about this, and I'm glad Mikey's here. Why do they keep screwing up the brown people? What is going on? <laughs> oh, so you think that's bad? Apparently, the universe hates women's wrestling because Adolfo was messaging me. Because so you'll see this review later. But Adolfo and his wife are c covering Collision from yesterday on Saturday, and they're also covering Battle of the Belts for AEW as well. So it was a three-hour AEW block. Apparently, the universe hated women's wrestling so much that the AEW Women's Championship match at Battle of the Belts, because of storms in Calgary, like, it shut off the satellite, so, like, it cut out. It cut out pretty much the second half of the match. And then when they finally got it back together, the match was over. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. <laughs> That's... Why? Uh, I'm, this is, this is good. Is it like some like in recent memory that the Japanese wrestlers are getting a lot more? They're being treated a lot better than like Latina rest like Latina wrestlers. I don't know. Like, because like a, like Oscar currently holds the belt. Io Sky is the you know Money in the Bank. Money in the Bank, which that's the match I want to see. Yes. Um, Shinsuke Nakamura, you know, until recently was you know treated as a, as a viable threat for any division in in, in uh in WWE, and then it's like, unless your name was Rey Mysterio, nobody cares if you're Mexican. It's sort of a cyclical, and I think Mike could probably speak to this a little better. There was a big push for Japanese wrestlers, late 80s, early 90s, and then, of course, it goes into PBS, TNT, USA, and other networks that want more of an American face, for lack of a better term, and then the systemic racism shows up, and then you don't see any people of color or whatever. And it's sort of every few years, it kind of comes back to the surface, if I'm not quite mistaken, Mikey. Um, but the last few years, with New Japan and AEW really pushing for it, WWE not being stupid, and, like, bringing in diversity. Well, the Triple H not being stupid. Triple H, yeah, exactly. let's, let, let's keep it real. Triple H doing that correctly. I don't think we had a time where we had sort of 
Japanese or Asian American wrestlers in the forefront of storylines like this for so long. That's actually nope. really interesting. The like the only other Japanese, were, oh, I mean, granted, at the same time, Akira Torizara is being destroyed by Rhea Ridley. So, sure, sure. lucky, lucky man. <laughs> Let's get to SmackDown uh, before we go on a tangent, because we're starting to go off on a tangent. Uh, SmackDown started with the promo, Bianca Belair and Charlotte Flair. So, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I could give the quick summary. So. It's so weird because I know eventually they're turning Bianca heel, which I'm here for. I love heel Bianca because it's going to give shade. I'm hoping to give shades of her NXT persona because, funny enough, she was a heel in NXT. But she was the cocky heel, but she could back it up, which I'm excited for her to get back to that. But is she... Are they really pushing her for heel? She's... She... Well, somebody has to be a heel in this situation. I mean, it didn't work the last time. <laughs> Every, yeah, and everyone's over it. Nobody cares. Right. I, I, the only reason why I would like to see Bianca be a heel again so I can start seeing her whip the fuck out of people with her hair. I miss her whipping people with her braid as one of her moves. I love seeing that. I, and we were in Carolina again, right? Yeah. Yes. Right? Homegirl tripped on her words. <laughs> Couldn't, yeah, could barely talk coming out, and the crowd was like, "Yeah, you're here. Show me something." And then nothing happened. <laughs> you know, it, it ended with them saying like handshakes, and then nobody swung any anybody. And I was like, "This is a lame ass promo." I want a title shot. I don't have the title. Will somebody give me a title shot. Okay. <laughs> Exactly. What? Okay, fine. Okay, thanks. Bye. There was no reason to do any of this. <laughs> they both look fantastic. Yes. Fair. The bodysuit game is on point. <laughs> is this a thing now? I'm not cool. I'm not cool or hip and with it. Are bodysuits a thing now? Like full onesies? I think. I think there's a trend now amongst women's wrestlers doing it because Bianca and Charlotte did it. Last night at Impact Slam Anniversary Pay Per View, Trinity's wrestling gear is like. A bodysuit. Which, by the way, congratulations to Trinity. I mean, I put up a YouTube short kind of quickly reviewing Slammiversary. But Trinity did dethrone Deanna Perazzo and is your new knock Impact Knockouts World Champion. Both, both uh, Mercedes and Trinity are both doing really well since they've left. Yes. I'm so excited for this Trinity run, especially if I've read the reports right now that Mickey James supposedly is cleared. Mickey versus Trinity is going to be good. So many titles changed hands at Slammiversary. I was not expecting it. I watched SmackDown at like 10, 11 o'clock last night when I got home from work. Yeah, but this promo, I mean, here's the thing. So this promo really didn't set up anything because it would have made sense if Bianca and Charlotte were going to face each other in the main event, but I'm like, Asuka was nowhere to be seen in this promo. And throughout the night... We got backstage segments of quick shots of, like, Adam Pierce doing his best to talk to Bianca about things. Charlotte, Asuka, Bailey, and Io were running around doing stuff. We'll get to the main event because I'm like, that main event, but the match itself was fine. I didn't hate it, but just the overbookingness really irritated me, but we can get to that. This is, this is the Tony <laughs> Khan syndrome. And um, we talk about this on the Dynamite Review, where it's sort of, well, we got to end the night. Put everybody in. <laughs> You're here. You're there. I'm like, no, this gets clunky. It doesn't really work. Uh, I feel like the last few weeks, they may have been pushing for uh, Bianca and Charlotte and Asuka and everyone, like, hey, give us a, give us the promo, give us the storyline, give us anything. And they, this was finally their night to do it. It's like, we'll weave it into this. But still, we're bogged down in bloodline pl- promos. We're still sort of mismanaging the order of events, in my opinion. I'm just a dude sitting at home on a podcast. But in my, watching it just feels out of order. Like, why is the order of this so weird? You could have done this a hundred different ways. It would have felt cleaner. Um, and sadly, they finally got, all right, we're going to push these stories. We're going to wind this all up. We're going to get this all these elements in here. And all the writing and performance and delivery of it just kind of went, eh. Uh, and no, I could care. I didn't care. I wanted to. It. W- we'll talk about it throughout the night too. But it's like WWE realized. Oh damn, we have. We are three weeks away from SummerSlam, and we've. Been, 
like all the good stuff has been well i say good stuff but i put this in air quotes like the good writing teams are being used for the bloodline and everybody else is just scrambling to get everybody else into which was a very apparent in this episode of smackdown too because i was like okay bloodline and then everybody else scrambled to figure out what we're doing for everybody else <laughs> wasn't there only like two singles matches this entire time everything else was a multi-man match well, let's see. Let me look at my notes here. Oh, yeah. there was only one singles match. Everything else was either a tag team or the Fatal. Oh, I mean, Fatal 4 Ways, they're four singular guys, but it wasn't just one-on-one. -on -one. And... Yeah, so they, they just like threw everybody in multi to get this together. We need everybody to be on this SmackDown. Go. No, I'm kind of old. Uh, we'll talk about some of this. Stuff. Yeah, you're right. Yes. Yeah. Next up, we had uh, Sheamus and Rich Holland versus pretty deadly, actually. Uh, one of the, I think it was the blonde. Elton Prince separated his shoulder in the middle of this match, so he is going to be out for a bit. Is that true? Yeah. No yes, way. it sucks. So, Rich, Rich Holland, because, you know, everybody gives Rich Holland a bunch of crap for being an unsafe wrestler. He posted on Twitter, he was like, hey, just so y'all don't get all, you know, pissy, uh, he took a bad landing from the pounce, not from the belly to belly that I threw on him. Because he got, uh, he hurt somebody else not that long ago. Well, see, he has to do that because remember, the internet was about to crucify this man because remember, he was the one that pulled that move that caused Big E to br almost break his neck. Right. And, yeah. oof. So wait, where did he get hurt? I'm trying to, I'm pulling up the match right now. <laughs> when, oh, when Rich Hall hit him with a pounce, he took a, he took a really bad, um, during one of his pounces during the hot tag. Okay. Really? Yeah. yeah. I saw That's... it too. I saw him hard to hold his shoulder and everything like that. And he took another like, he took another few bumps after that. Interesting. Yeah. So that's that's near the end, I guess, right? Uh, must be. Yeah. Sorry, everyone, but bad podcasting. <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> right. I'm trying to find so, out. Yeah, that match should end. You know, pretty deadly took a dub. Um, <laughs> I liked this match. I had a lot of fun watching. it. What? Well, yeah. I think this pretty deadly thing is actually kind of funny. I think they're a great they're, tag team. They're hilarious. Um, they're one of the uh, came up through NXT, correct? I'm not mistaken. Correct? Did we talked about this before. Yep. Staples of NXT UK. UK got shut down. Then they came to America for a little bit. Technically, they got they were our the technically they got swimming with the fishes on NXT because Tony D'Angelo, the mob boss, off them. <laughs> And so they literally they died in NXT lore, <laughs> but just like just like horror movies and murder mysteries, if you don't see the body, then they're still out there. <laughs> oh man, I just saw. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Because that's, that's him really hurt. Oh, he, and he rolls out of the ring. He's all messed up. Yeah, that was during a pounce, so he landed wrong. Jeez. So like he didn't he didn't do anything wrong. I still don't think Rich should be throwing belly to belly since what happened with Big E, but. I, so, uh, this is, we'll talk about this on another Biconics night. Oh, yeah, he split his, oh, and then he took, like, five more bombs. <laughs> he took a couple bombs, people jumping on him, yeah. And he's holding his shoulder the whole time? Woof. Ah, uh, I saw, I went to an indie promotion last night, uh, speaking of belly to bellies, uh, and that seemed to be, like, an epidemic of belly to bellies at yeah, this indie promo thing that I watched. And that was tricky because I'm sitting there like, please don't break a neck, please don't, no, please don't die. Yeah, that move is it's super flashy, super dangerous. I mean, the only person that I saw that I actually tr enjoyed seeing that move from was Kurt Angle. Sure, he could throw those super, super well, but. Oh, and Kurt would throw those at an ang uh, at an angle, like they were kind of one direction, like when it's straight over your head. He was throwing it straight over your head. He was throwing block. He was doing block shit over his head. Really? I'll go look. Yeah. Maybe because he was smaller? I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, he, it, he, it threw, he threw people throw with it. Like he, but he would throw you. But yeah, that was... A match. Was, I mean, it was good. It was good. Rich does look better overall as an as a in-ring performer. He's getting more confident working with Sheamus. And, um... I still don't think they should have pulled him up from NXT because he barely was there for a couple of months before they pulled. Well, he was there for a couple of months. Then he got injured, I believe, saving Johnny Gargano's life because he was about to land on his neck. 
when he flipped out of the ring, I think. Somebody flipped out of the ring, and they almost landed wrong, but Ridge caught them. But in the process of going down, like, Ridge broke an ankle. <laughs> so he was out for a little bit, came back for, like, a month or two, and then they pulled him and Pete Dunn up to the main roster to be with Sheamus. So I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, that's cool. This is not the NXT review, but... Where is Braun Breaker? So, okay, so... Just had an absolute banger of a match with Ilya Dragunov. For the number one contendership to should have been on a pay per view. It really should have. That was like we got this. We got this quality match on free television. This is not the NXT review, but we'll no. What all I'll say is is that yeah. Judgment Day has invaded NXT for some reason. Finn Balor has pinned Carmelo Hayes twice in like two weeks. What and I think that's pushing a future storyline for when Carmelo gets moved up. Because if Ilya beats Carmelo, he's getting moved up to the roster. So I think they're pushing a story of I could beat everybody except for Finn. Dominic has a fucking championship match for the NXT North American Championship this week on Tuesday against Wesley. No apparent reason, apparently. I s uh, and people they're pushing that that's what they can do whatever the fuck they want. I'm just like, but not I'm going to the like going to NXT. Yeah, and they also have a, a tag team, him and um, Damian Priest have a tag team match against uh, a a non-title against match against Sheamus and KO on uh, Raw. Sammy and Kaya, it's weird. It's, I don't know what's happening in NXT. A lot of people are pushing, yeah, Dom should get gold. I'm like, absolutely fucking not. You keep that NXT championship away from him because I love Dominic Mysterio, but he's not ready to hold championship gold. I was like, and especially after this amazing run that Wesley has had as champion, don't do this to this man. I hope. Wesley's going to win. He has to. He has to. Somebody has to, because he's scheduled to face Ali at the Great American Bash in two weeks. Back to SmackDown. Main roster and NXT has been colliding so much recently. I was watching John the entire He looked like uh, uh, there's a bit that Triple H did a long time ago. Where he, <laughs> uh, uh, he like oversell the hell out of a move, and Shawn Michaels is on the rope telling him to fall over. Oh, and he yeah. You remind me of Sean, like, telling him to follow over. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is why I need a second NXT host, because then we can get it out of my system. But this match was fine. I thought it was fun. I feel like Brawling Brutes, I think, should be coming to an end soon. I think they should split. Really? Because now that Pretty Deadly is going to be out of action for a little bit, because, you know, Elton Prince is injured for who knows how long. There's really... I mean, Sheamus is in this U.S. United States Championship Invitational next week, which we'll talk about, by the way, because they kind of, WWE blew the proverbial load of who's going to be winning that match next week. But Ridge and Butch are doing nothing else. <laughs> right. And I, I don't dislike the Rollins Brutes. They've had fun promos, and as a faction, they've been cool. Uh, I do, I, again, we talk factions this all the time. I like factions at their peak. But then, like, I'd rather them to, hey, you're peaking, great, maybe slow down a little. The momentum got killed when they decided to split the Brawling Brutes and Imperium to different brands, is my opinion. Well, no, they just need to, you know, split the fucking tag team belt so each, each brand has their own tag team belt. Because there's, like, three factions in SmackDown that aren't doing anything. Not doing anything. Like, the OC is, like, there, besides their whole... I mean, count carrying across fuck him. Uh, the LW that angle is over. I'm not sure why they put. We'll talk about that later. LWO <laughs> is there. LWO. The only person who's doing anything is Escobar, and he's and and like Ray is there, but Ray's there only because it's Ray Mysterio. And then you have the Brawler Brutes that aren't doing anything besides losing to Pretty Deadly. So we're what seven weeks from the draft? Eight weeks from the draft? <laughs> Something like that, but like J like JVL likes to echo, the draft means nothing. It it means nothing, but it it fractured all these stories. It killed a lot of st post WrestleMania. I was like, oh, this is gonna be great. We're gonna get rematches, and no, mm -mm. it's all gone. And I don't know if that's contracts or what, but now it's just a mess heading into SummerSlam. Like, what are we doing? We'll talk about the build to SummerSlam because SmackDown, 
I don't want to give Raw too much credit because they're also scrambling, but at least Raw has some... Raw has been more entertaining, and, and I think that might be my bias because I think Alpha Academy is the best thing they have going on right now. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, so what, what they need to do is, you know, make the t undisputed tag team champions and then the tag team champions so we actually can do something with these tag teams. We're not even... There's, yeah. There's so much talent there that they could be using. See, but now you're making sense. They're not going to do anything. Well, Triple H is still doing something. He's trying. Well, like, Triple H is trying. I mean, this this show didn't feel like a Vince show, which was good. Right. Also, speaking of Vince, Eric Young left because he didn't want to work on And he was back in Impact Wrestling as Scott Demore's partner against Bully Ray and Diener. That was a fun match. You know, I wish there were more people who stood up to Vince and left, like McIntyre. I was sort of glad to see McIntyre, but then I was also like, oh, but that means you buried the hatchet with Vince. I think and, it was, uh, I'd want the money, but well, fuck it. But, yeah, but at what cost? <laughs> I mean, you might be a legend, I don't think but... a lot. I don't think there's a lot of cost for him right now. I think Vince is just enough out of the way that he's, this is bearable. I don't know. It still sounds like he's metal. Well, we'll talk. We'll figure it out. So, so after this tag match, we had our first video package of the night, but this one wasn't the one I was okay with because we got Edge versus Grayson recap. Yeah. And then, which led into Kathy Kelly. Hi, Kathy. Love you, girl. Uh, <laughs> well, because I've been following her for a very long time. She started from reviewing the wrestling shows, and now she's a backstage interview. You go, girl. But. Great. She interviews Grayson Waller, who basically is talking about, like, he dropped hints that him and his real-life beef with The Rock is happening on the internets, and how everyone's talking about him and everything, but the one, Grayson, I love you, but while you were talking, I couldn't focus on your face, because I was looking at that big-ass pimple on the side of your neck. <laughs> I was like, sir, it is red and irritated and very protrude. I'm just like, sir, my eyes cannot look away. <laughs> Where do you make it, people? Come on now. I was like, you could have just switched Kathy and Grayson. Like, you could have been facing the other way. Like, but honestly, Grayson is very charismatic. He is a great talker. I love him. And I'm just happy that he's healed enough where he can actually wrestle again. Because I liked his match last week. I forgot how athletic that dude was. I'd never seen him before. I thought he it was, he's been incredible. See, me, yeah, me and Minnie here got very, very, we got, we were spoiled because he and Johnny Gargano had their match at Stand and Deliver for NXT. And though it was unsanctioned, the, Grayson it was jumping from place to place doing all sorts of things. So if you ever get a chance, John, you should look up the ladder match from two years ago at Stand and Deliver. I thought Grayson Waller broke an arm because when he jumped off the ladder, like, it was great. Or just watch the Johnny Gargano. I, exactly what I told you last week. Watch the Johnny Gargano, Grace the Waller on Sanction match. It was amazing. You so, watch Johnny Gargano's wife beat the fuck out of him with tender face. It was beautiful. It was a work of art. There's a lot of clips. Uh, you look at that. Okay. Yeah, but obviously this is the setup because Grayson's a part of the Fatal 4-Way Invitational, which we'll talk. I thought he was going to win that. We'll talk about that match because the surpri I was surprised too. Hey, yeah, next we had uh... another recap video, but this one I was bored with because they literally recap what happened last week in the Tribal Court, and it took like it wasn't as egregious. It was ten whole minutes of recap. I was like, I don't need a ten minute recap. I just watched the whole thing last week. Yeah, we dedicated at least almost twenty minutes to Bloodline recap. I know. Which is like, what are you doing? <laughs> I listened and I was editing the last week's video, so I know I was just like, "This, this is this is too much for me." Last last week was egregious with how much. Yeah. So I, I got the actual numbers for that, John. I told Mikey earlier. Uh, so without without ads, SmackDown was eighty nine minutes long. Thirty nine of that was Bloodline. Oh my God! No wonder everything else is rushed and terrible. Right. That's why. I, I, that's why I'd only got two minutes. This is. Check out last week's review if you want to hear all this go down. 
We need to do we need to do a ten minute recap of last week's review. We're doing SmackDown. We are not gonna sit here and recap that recap video for ten whole minutes. Absolutely not. Boot. So then Winnie said. <laughs> right. I'm, no. I'm, over I'm just not. I'm not following the rest of the internet and sadly other prominent YouTube people. I'm over this bloodline stuff. I'm either do something or don't. I'm <laughs> over it. I it's will admit. Time. I don't buy the acting. It's boring now. Nah. Well, well, I do will admit we'll get there when we actually get into it. I actually did enjoy this week's bloodline little segment they did. Wasn't super long. They got to the point and then they ended it. Uh, but it, you know, I actually sure. did enjoy it. But next up, we actually had Selena Vega versus Bailey, um, which know, is a great two minute match. God two dang it! Matches on the tonight's SmackDown. Um, in total, there was actually only one women's match, uh, but there was two. But there was only one. The women got done so wrong this episode of SmackDown. This one was short, and then our main event was overbooked to hell. I'm going to save my rage for that. <laughs> we can save the rage for the end. I actually thought this match was going to be interesting and something was going to happen. I it did not. I was, I, which is more my disappointment. I had about 30 seconds of like, yeah, this is awesome. And, I, and something in the middle of it was like, this feels wrong. And then, bam, ending. <laughs> what? And I looked away or something. I came back. It's over. Ding, ding, ding. Like, I, I literally went to go make a hot... I literally went to go make a hot pocket. I came back. Match is over. I'm like, what happened? The only good thing that happened from all of this is we're, they're pushing shots. Let's talk about this. Okay. We're pushing so, the Biconic's favorite girl, Shotzi. I was very excited because uh, the way dark and brooding Shotzi in that one shot that I saw there. I didn't scream, but I definitely had a vocal sound come off of my body. Like, You're, it went up a couple octaves. Oh, uh, there's two octaves there. The right shots of real house. Shots of the horror nerd. She loves this stuff. If they give her a chance to kind of settle and be in the moment brooding, selling the promo like they kind of did for this one, I think she got the acting chops to pull it off. Quit giving her all the exterior craziness. Let her be present and go. Like it's gonna be worth watching. I, I think that's gonna so, be really cool. So for the audience who doesn't know, Professor worked with Shotzi in the past on a movie. So if he does know her, this is why he's so excited about this. He knows a little bit of the backstory and why we're all like, let's go, Shotzi, because Professor knows her. And she okay, know her is a stretch. She would not remember. <laughs> she's an acquaintance. <laughs> If I was like, hey, I was in that one thing that one time with you. Hey, that fun. And I can't tell, I haven't told any of the stories of, of on set, Mr. Johnson. There's a really great story that I don't know if I can tell or not. It's but, one of those things we tell when the bots are gone. Yeah. Which is, which or we save it for <laughs> the Biconics or Patreon, one of the two. And it's, it's just tells you, it's a story about how cool Shotzi is in general as a person and how she just schooled another actor in a very particular way. Oh, yes. It was quite funny. So, I want to break this promo down a little bit because, cool. like, okay, so all of us here at the Biconics, all of us have different strengths. Professor and JVL are, are thespians, so they can go into the promo theater parts. Mini here is uh, our historian as well as our in-ring breakdown person with the moves. Adolfo is also the historian and can recall like like matching past gimmicks with current ones. And I take the narrative writing perspective because writing's my big thing here. The writing for this was just it felt so organic and just the, the there was one part of the promo that the inflection changed and I got goosebumps when she's talking about it. She's like, maybe I am a little weird. I was like, I was like, I can't explain the actual terminology for it, but just this like slight break towards the end of that delivery of weird. I was just like, oh my God, I got goosebumps. <laughs> it's that tactic change. Mm -hmm. That's sort of to go from, it shows us uh, humanity a little bit, right? There's that vulnerability of like, you all make fun of me, you all make fun of me. And yeah, you know what? I'm going to agree with you. Uh, I didn't know till after the show and reading other sources that Shotzi has done this because she's supporting her sister who's going through chemotherapy and yep. cancer, which is obviously more important than any of all of this. Uh, Shotzi, who lost her father about a year and a half ago, and now her sister battling this, my heart goes out to her. I hope she does 
hope she gets through and I hope she gets what she needs and her family needs and all that support. That goes without saying. Uh, I don't know how I feel about WWE kind of writing it into a storyline, but I wonder if Shotzi was like, hey, I'm shaving my head and I think I have an idea. Because that's what it felt like to me. Because Shotzi was like, hey, let's do it like this. And now we have a reason for this. And maybe they're like, okay, cool. And maybe now we finally get a Shotzi push. Maybe she can find a finisher with her new bald head. Something needs to happen. Just don't, don't, don't make it a flying head foot. Ah, uh, no. You can't use those anyway, right? Like, aren't those banned universally? Uh, Tech. It's like one of those unspoken rules that you're not, it's not recommended, but you're not going to get trouble. Brian, Daniel, Daniel Bryan used it. Uh, uh, yes. The Canadians still do it. <laughs> you're not going to tell them what to do. Uh... So I, I'm really hopeful. I hope Shotzi gets some bitchin' finisher and comes out as maybe crazy, but not totally off the rails crazy. Actually make the Alexa Bliss angle actually work. Sure. Yeah. I just had a thought. Did it, did it feel good? I saw the light bulb go off on the show. It scares me. It's just the window behind me. I think I just figured out how Eo's going to get screwed out of her cash-in. <laughs> Well, here's why, because right now it's we're getting we're looking to do Shotzi versus Bailey in this feud because Bailey was the one who cut Shotzi's hair. So what I'm thinking is, I think at SummerSlam, I don't know if we let's be real. Oscar's title is going to be a triple threat between her, Bianca, and Charlotte, which is going to be a fun match. I think Io is either going to cash in during or towards the beginning and turn it into a fatal four way. Which is fine. I kind of just want Asuka versus Io. I love Bianca and Charlotte, but they can wait for a little bit. But I think that for the cash-in, either Shotzi's going to do something to distract Io or cause Bailey to like not pay attention to where she needs to be. And I think Io's eating the pin at SummerSlam. <laughs> so you still perpetuate Shotzi versus Bailey, but then you... Sp so the seeds of discords even more between Bailey and Eo. Huh. I I wouldn't I agree with that. And I have I don't like it, but <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't know if I love it. I don't like it either, but I could see them doing that. <laughs> or they're setting up a long term if you listen to this one, this is a book this is booking, I'm putting on my booking hat here. Um it's gonna happen, the match is gonna happen as normal. Eo is gonna cash in, win the title. Bailey's gonna turn on Eo to go off the belt. Bailey's gonna take it from Eo, and then that's when Shotzi comes in and it takes the belt from Bailey. See, I like that better because Shotzi Shotzi gets the title at the end of this feud, but I don't. Yeah. See, that makes sense. They're not gonna do what makes sense. Gonna... Why does everything I have to say make sense? I gotta I... <laughs> hire me as a booker, WWE. Hey, I know what I'm talking about. You know what you're talking about. They're just gonna do things to get people to watch every week. Right? So the reason they won't do what you're saying is because, oh, well, that ties it up in a bow. Why would I watch? It's like, no, because that's what we, we want episodic stuff now. The, narr the writer in me is so frustrated. I was just like, it doesn't even need to be like a full three-year storyline. It could just be for like two to three months. Like, that's, that's a solid like two, three papers. Exactly. Like, it's that, fine. That can get you into like, what, Survivor Series? Like end of Survivor Series. I would love to see them push Shotzi by Shotzi. I don't know, going full horror movie in a sense of like, I don't want to say stalker. That's not what I mean. Even though WWE does perpetuate this kind of stuff. It's sort of like, do the creepy stuff. Like be in the ring, be near the ring, but not say anything to Bailey. Or just be in the hallways near, or certain messages. Do so like what, what like, Sting did at WCW where he's just there? Where, yes, just there. Enough to be a presence, and you don't even like, have he just, to... He's just in the rafters. He's not doing shit. He's just sure. There. I think something subtle like that with Shotzi, and then still have these promos of, <laughs> of, I'm not crazy, you can't control me, whatever else. I think that would be really cool. And then we'd have some psychology so, behind it, and it could be fun. So, what would her finisher then be? The tombstone. They won't... The only people they're led to tombstones are Taker and Kane. They don't let people I, do pile drivers. I know. She's 5'1". She can't do a tombstone. It's a joke, Minnie. I know. I, know. I was seriously considering it because I was the first in the parts of my mind, too. Really? <laughs> driver. I was like, oh, that's perfect. Could you imagine Shotzi just too so? I was also thinking Chokeslam, but she's only 5'1". Oh, I don't think she's 5'1". She can't be 5'1". She's got to be more than 5'1". At least one off the number you told me. 
<laughs> I'm a teacher. Don't believe me all the time. <laughs> teachers don't lie. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, your teachers have steered you very wrong. We're here to keep you. We're here to keep it real. She's five six. <laughs> She's five six. She's plenty tall. She's she, she could do a job, Sam. We could totally. Nah, jump she in. needs something like a sister Abigail kind of move. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Or like some really creepy looking uh, submission hold. Uh, yeah, some sort of submission hold would be cool. I mean, if they gave her the old, the old school mankind, here's this thing. Like, oh, the man, the man. Yes, man. yes. She can rock the mandible claw. Yeah. And just never talk about it. And then just one day, like, I'm like, might as well if if other other women have used it as their finishers, I'll uh, look at AEW's Burt Breaker. But you know, <laughs> but. Or, or, or first thing is like I'm gonna do your finisher to you. That'd be hilarious. But you stole my hair, so I'm gonna steal your move. Ah, uh, that'd be ah, uh, man. I just hope it seems that Triple H has a hand in pushing Shotzi, and I hope that continues. But we'll see what happens with this. All right, that was pretty. That was the first hour. So let's get into the opening of the second hour. This is more bloodline so stuff. It wasn't fun, but this is the part that I actually did enjoy was Jay's portion of this. Uh, I thought Jay did had a really good promo, um, and we finally saw Paul Hammond get his fucking nineteen chins kicked. <laughs> I I, my understanding, is that this is, folks, and you all will can corroborate this if you want to. Paul Hammond hasn't taken a bump in a really long time. Because he's old, partly because he's gone. Well, well, well. Well, I guess we can call it a bump. Remember, Brock Lesnar used him as a weapon at last year's SummerSlam against Roman. <laughs> so it's few and far between. Right. Uh, he, he takes maybe one or two more. Maybe. Right. Maybe. I'm just I I couldn't help but laughing. Him and his 19 chins, like, like he. I'm like, damn, Paul Heyman, you messed up the super kick because he didn't sell it that well. <laughs> but I still I enjoyed it. Paul Heyman is like forty. Paul Heyman is like, you know, forty years over thirty. So <laughs> not be able to do the thing While they're doing their research, let me summarize this. Let me summarize this promo. So Jay comes out and he's mad about what happened to Jimmy, and he's going to wreck Roman Reigns, which is what we want. Halfway through this promo, Paul Heyman and Solo Sokoa comes out. Oh my God! Here's the. Th <laughs> Like, listen, if Teddy Long can get his own theme music, Paul Heyman can get his own too. But the point being, I know. I was like, holla, holla. But I, I have never seen on my television screen the embodiment, like the physical humanitarian embodiment of gaslighting. The more that I did during Paul Heyman's segment during this whole entire promo. God, I was just like, wow, you're a piece of shit, Paul Heyman. Good job. He spoke more than two words. I was I was like I was shocked. I'm over the gaslighting in the bloodline thing. Me too, I know. It's easy writing, in my opinion. It's just easy to do this and and yes, it makes you the heel, and yes the audience goes, Oh my god, why would you say that? But again, anyone for you to be manipulated for this long in front of everybody, I don't buy it anymore. I just don't buy that a personality like that. And I think we're finally seeing Jay fight back and be like, no, you're not gonna do this to me, sort of thing. That's kind of happening. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens kind of forced that on them for the storyline. I, I mean, it's too easy to me now. Like Paul Heyman gaslight, gaslight Cody Rhodes, <laughs> gaslit Cody Rhodes. What was that a year ago now, I guess? And that fantastic promo, like, it, it's kind of too easy. So well, that's what Paul Heyman does. So, fine. Yeah, he's so damn good at it. I'm good at it, but I'm kind of immune to watching it. Like, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they ended with, you know, super kicks for everybody solo, and Paul Heyman ran away with their tails between their legs. Which is great, because Paul Heyman got kicked in the face, and that's what we've been wanting, we've been wanting to see that for <laughs> a year now, since he got used as a weapon. I kind so. of wanted to see a more happen to... Paul Heyman. Right. Yeah, you got super kick K. I wanted to kind of see something with a little more of an exclamation point. Like he should like, hit the splash on him. Yes. The splash or like Paul Heyman gets a chair and then gets kicked through the chair. Like something. Yeah, I still, it was, who did he do it to when Paul Heyman got in the ring and started punching somebody? <laughs> was it KO? Yeah. Uh, no. Paul Heyman tried to punch KO. 
No, he, he came in the ring and was like hitting somebody, but it seemed like a little child. It's hilarious. It might have. It could have also been Brock Lesnar, because you know. No, it wasn't Brock. Maybe. But yeah, that was that was actually a decent bloodline promo, and I think that was the last time we heard about the bloodline until they kept reminding us that Roman's going to be here next week. Can we also, like, okay, let's talk about that, because I get annoyed with this. I'm like, every two weeks, Roman Reigns will be back for the thousandth and sixteenth time. (laughs) Also, I want to put it out there, it's been over a hundred days since Roman has put his titles up. The last time he put his titles up were at WrestleMania Night 2. He is not, his titles have not been on the line, so, yes, he's held the belts for over a thousand days, but it's like, if you're only defending him every 100 days. Meanwhile, Orange Cassidy, every week for two years. I'm sorry, moving on. <laughs> I know. His, Seth Rollins has had, what, like six or seven defenses within the last couple weeks? It's, ri- it's ridiculous. I think it's getting goofy. And, and again, they wrote themselves into a corner. They don't want to fix it. They don't know how to fix it. They think this push is going to be something... I don't know. I do like that they're pushing Jay to be <laughs> Superstar Jay Uso, Main Event Jay Uso, right? Like, you're going to get a singles push for a little while. Okay, fine. But, if then where, are going? Where, do we, where do we go? I do get the hunch, and you guys can agree or disagree, or we can talk about it a little bit. I do think the family tree is going to play a point at this. Oh, for play sure. In this at some point. I don't know what it is. We keep hinting at The Rock. We keep hinting at dad and rikishi it happened again and i was like oh you keep invoking rikishi you're gonna make me angry if he doesn't show up they talk about you know cousins and uncles and all these folks coming out if there is not a tribal court at some point even though with I hate everybody them, with, with, uh, if with roman everybody. Reigns, someone roman reigns has got to go out there and go to give someone the riot act and then we got to see the whole family tree whoever's alive and who can make the trip have them all come out there and then do some sort Even of... Even if it's surfing. just The Rock and Rikishi. I mean, that's great. Because I, I want to see Roman take a stink face. <laughs> I, would, I mean, stink face is for everybody. Everybody. Like, you get a stink face. You get a stink face. I want Rikishi to be the equivalent of Eddie Murphy's Dragon and Mulan. It's like, dishonor. Dishonor on you. Dishonor on your cow. Dishonor on your whole family. And Rikishi, I want to see Rikishi come in and be like, this is all messed up, y'all. This is not what the family wanted. Roman, you're trash. He's taking over the tribal chief spot. Me. <laughs> and we get Rikishi get pushed back on TV for a while. <laughs> I love seeing Give me some dancing Rikishi again. That'd be... But, so, we're talking about this because, obviously, while it hasn't been confirmed in, you know, the world, the WWE universe, we know it's happening. Ultimately, I Ray versus Roman, not Ray, Roman versus Jay is happening at SummerSlam. The question, I don't even, I hope it's for the titles. That is what I want to see, but ultimately I'll also take a singles match. Regardless, either Jay needs to take the title off Roman or Jay needs to pin Roman and then we're done because I want to echo what Minnie brought up last week on SmackDown Review. Regardless of whether it's for the titles or not, Jay needs to win here and I want to be done with this storyline for a bit. Let Roman go crazy, have him take a break, like whatever it needs to. I don't want to see this I don't want to see the bloodline on my TV screen for a little bit because Especially if the notion is is that we're supposed to get Roman versus Cody round two at next year's WrestleMania, which is a very long fucking time, may I add. But I want the story, I want this portion of the Bloodline storyline to be over, let everyone go off and do their own things for a little bit, and then maybe post-Royal Rumble you can bring Roman back and then start building up for Cody versus Roman. But Jay needs the win here, because if he doesn't win, well... I legit have no way of figuring out who is going to be next in line to come up against Roman because Roman has ran through pretty much all of the men's division and there is nobody left. <laughs> I mean, there's like one person, but I, I don't even think that's going to happen because we got a return of somebody on television, which actually we'll talk about in a little bit, but I'm ready. For, yeah. Okay. If it makes sense, it's not going to happen, but... Well, yeah. you know, <laughs> I'm going to do that. I'm going to say it anyways. I, yeah. 
But here's the thing, Triple H loves LA Knight, but we know that Vince doesn't <laughs> for some odd fucking reason. It's because they think he's, because he's too old, but Vince only 40. Edge is like 50. So there's if people who have belts that are way older than that. If you're over, you're over. Play the hot hand. Like, right. It's, it right. Does, at some point, it doesn't matter. Right. Like, I think that's why they're giving him this US title reign to see how well he does with the belt. That's if he they give it to him. <laughs> so WWE the last couple of years, like I haven't been overly upset with the product, but the biggest phrase that has occurred within the last two, three years of WWE is missed opportunity. Because there have been so many instances where they have such a hot commodity and it can blow up into something special. But they never pull the trigger on it for some odd reason, and they then, and then on top of that too, by the time they get around to it, I, me as an audience member has lost interest. I'm like, you've been blue balling me for months now. I'm, I don't care. <laughs> like that's how it feels. I was like, you're gonna be a tease. You're gonna give me something I want. You're not gonna pull the trigger and let it happen. And you're just like. You're just blue balling me this whole entire time. And then by the time you make the decision, be like, you know what? Let's get to it. We, me as an audience member has lost interest because you lo you've you lost my faith in your product as a viewer. But, yeah. and, and again, the, <laughs> the emotional whiplash is out of control. And I don't know what it is, man. Like, WWE it always repeats the cycle when we get to the big four pay-per-views like they're always scrambling to figure out okay who's going to be on the card what matches are we doing the matches are going to be a lot of fun but from your writer's perspective I want at least storylines to coherently make sense and I'm tired of the stop and start feuds like I get it injuries happen sometimes and you can't control that but gosh dang it you guys like it's not it really isn't that hard to come up with at least a C grade storyline where it narratively makes sense instead of just throwing everyone together to see what you can do I was thinking of something that doesn't make sense let's talk about carrying cross and the United States champion invitational four <laughs> gosh dang it this match like this Precisely why I was like, fuck it, because it's like, you lost 1,700 times in a row and he's still going so, after everybody. AJ Styles, Santos Escobar, Butch from the Brawling Brutes, and Grayson Waller come together for this match. Uh, and I don't want to sound like a jerk. Commentator did a piss poor job explaining what the fuck this was. Yeah, this was odd. I had to figure it out later. <laughs> I saw Santos in the match and I immediately, immediately said, oh, he's not going to win. And then he won. <laughs> okay, so let, let's start from... Honestly, like, I... Okay, so this is a hot take, but let, let's rewind a little bit. So Austin Theory first comes out, and, you know, let's explain... We're going to explain this for the audience, because Michael Cole and Wade Bear didn't do a very good job of explaining what was going down. So... There was also a commercial right in the middle of this. This... Again, this was... This was a messy... But, so, apparently... So... So for the listening and the viewing audience, this is we're going to make sense of this. So apparently, Austin Theory is going to be defending his title, which is probably going to be at SummerSlam, though they didn't say it, but let's be real, it's going to be at SummerSlam. And so SmackDown is having, this week and next week, they're having two Fatal 4-Ways, and the winner of those two Fatal 4-Ways will come together in a one-on-one -on -one match, and the winner of that match will go on to face Austin Theory for the United States Championship. This week, we had AJ Styles, Santos, Butch, and Grayson Waller. Commentary could have did that in like less than a minute that it took me to explain this, but they didn't explain it very, very well. Austin Theory, like there was no even, there was no even like, inc like inciting event slash incident that would make Austin Theory be like, hey, Austin, you have... Like, we didn't get nothing. Like, there was no management saying, Austin, you haven't defended this title in a while, so here's what's going to happen. You keep ducking. You keep interfering. You've already, like, your last two wins are very questionable. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to hold invitationals, right? And then the winners are going to face each other, and the winner of those that match is going to face you at SummerSlam. And then Matt, Adam Pierce could have been like, if you get involved in any singular way, you will be stripped of that title. I'll be like, bam, I solved this story in like less than a minute. Sure, it's over. Yeah, 
But it makes sense. Yes. <laughs> the match itself was fun, but... It's uh, fun. He, he hit his finisher, which is cool. He fi yeah, he hit his finisher. It, I his finisher is still, like, way too many moving pieces, but it's a lot of fun to watch. So much to but then, <laughs> I was like, AJ was pulling up with the Styles Clash, and we're getting ready to hit, and then who pops up on the Titan Tron halfway during this match? I'm like, gosh dang it, I thought we were done with this feud. <laughs> I think I'll I find somebody I don't like more than Omos. Ooh, but that's, that's I don't inherently hate Karrion Cross, but my gosh, this feud is not doing anything for him, and it's not doing anything for AJ. Okay, that, yes, there we go. So, I don't buy this computer person to me, given circumstances to me. I don't buy it for the sense that, like, all I have to do is do this thing and pin you, and I'll run backstage. Take the 30 seconds to do the job you needed to do. And then go save your friend. Like, I didn't I didn't buy that. AJ didn't even run all the way to the back during the match. Like he got a, like he stopped halfway up the ramp and Grayson Waller hit him from behind and then was knocked out cold. It would have made sense if he like ran to the back during the match. That was the end of last of AJ we saw. Like this was a weird in-between. Yeah, you're absolutely right. If it was, oh my god, my friend is getting murdered, I better run quickly. Versus are you actually hurting him? Are you actually hurting him? Are you actually doing this? Bam, get hit with Grayson Waller. Yeah, like, what's happening? Uh, they're making AJ look so incompetent, it hurts me. This is lazy writing, and it's not just WWE. AEW is guilty of this, and I'm sure there's other promotions too. Oof. We're, using, we're using promos and the screen and the cutaway to try and make this sort of epic TV moment. Check out the Rampage review, because I went off on QTV. It was... And check out the Dynamite review when it gets uploaded, too, because me and the professor go off on pro. <laughs> Listen, promos are being are really weird across all of the promotions right now. And I know you got TV people you got to pay. I know you have TV time you got to fill. I know you shot all these things. I know I get it fine, but it, it looks dumb. It doesn't work. Very rarely does it come off correctly. <laughs> Right. Because it's it's always it's always that hitch in the giddy up. It's always the witch blast, whatever uh, analogy you want to use. Like it just doesn't work. Right. And once that happened with AJ getting clocked by Grayson, then literally we kind of get into the finishing sequence. So Grayson Waller does his like diving roll finisher and hits Butch with it. And of course, I'm like, Santos kind of messed up a little bit because there was like a couple seconds too long for Santos to get to the top rope and hit a splash and pin Grayson for the win. Don't, okay, I'm going to sound like I'm a hypocrite here because I'm always rooting for my brown wrestlers, right? I love Santos and I'm happy he wins and I think the match between him and LA Knight's going to be good because they've had histories in NXT matches together. Those have always been fire. I actually kind of think Grayson should have went over here to fit. Grayson versus LA Knight is money making television right there, man. Oh, absolutely. You got two folks that can talk. And, and they've also wrestled each other. It's it's so, yeah. so good. I'm happy that Santos won. But then I was just like, oh, baby, you're losing. You're losing to the winner <laughs> next week, which is the other problem I had with when. Actually, we can just. Well, okay, we'll we'll wait about we'll get into that shortly because after this match, Bobby Lashley is back on SmackDown, you guys. So I haven't I Bobbles! <laughs> because in my head I was thinking this week, you know who I haven't seen in a while? I haven't seen Bobby Lashley. Who is he drafting? Was he even on the thing? I was thinking about Bobby Lashley. And so lo and hold he appears. And there they are. I love the Street Profits. I'm gonna use I adore them. So once I saw them on the screen, I was like, oh, this is going to be great. Three of them together, possibly creating a faction, possibly doing whatever happens next, hanging out in a limo, doing a buddy cop movie, which seems to be also a trend if you're watching other reviews. I'm, I'm excited for that. I'm really happy to see them there. Uh, something different, something new, something that's not the bloodline. I'm, it sucked that it was only 45 seconds. My only fear is... <laughs> They're teasing something. It was such was, a tease! Oh, but the, at that point, you look and go, what the fuck do you do with, uh, with 
the street, what was it, the, uh, the Hurt Business? That's my biggest fear, is that this is going to turn into Hurt Business 2.0, which, by the way, also, miss opportunity is still the operative word, because you could have had the Hurt Business be, like, the hottest faction, but, you know, they didn't pull the trigger on that. My Also, my other biggest fear is this is WWE's biggest trope, and, you know, the internet fans drive me nuts sometimes. I'm like, you guys, it's okay. You don't need to stick all the black people in one faction. Like, not every <laughs> not every black wrestler needs to be in the same faction. Yeah, Once again, the white man beating down on African Americans, story of America. Hey-o. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hilarious if you actually, it's legitimately a true thing. Every, Every black champion always gets brutalized by Brock Lesnar. In the recent, the only one that really did it was Ron Simmons, but every other one got beat by Brock Lesnar, and I saw a video on TikTok where it's just a layer that Brock Lesnar came out and hit everything. Like yeah, uh, Ron Simmons, you're, you don't, Ron Simmons will just kill you. Like, Ron Simmons don't play. Right. But I'm, I'm excited to see what happens with Street Profits and Mr. Bobbles. Or uh, this is one's for our friend Uriel Booby Lashley, as we call him. <laughs> well, because he has massive pe pecs, Professor, so I was just like, those mammograms are huge. <laughs> and the duck noises made it better. <laughs> so, so obviously, hopefully, we'll see how this develops. I mean... Again, I just I'm breaking my own rule here, but Bianca joining that faction would be great. You just said not. But it may but see I'm breaking this rule because it makes sense because Montez and Bianca are actually married. They actually even acknowledge that also. Be a power couple. I want a power couple. Go. Bianca came out during her the main event and it, when the little thing comes up and it's like facts about the wrestler, it says married for Montez Ford. <laughs> Alright. That's fine. I guess that, that makes it okay. It doesn't have to be because Bianca actually can stand on her own, so she doesn't really need it. But I'm, what, yeah. What, what, the brawling, the brawling brutes break up, and then Butch has nowhere to go, so he hangs out with the faction with all of them. <laughs> see, I want Butch to go back to his Pete Dunn moniker. That's what I want to see. Oh sure. You, we talked about this not too long ago. Yeah. Pete Dunn is his. That moniker is great. Make that make the IC title become a triple threat, even though he's on SmackDown. <laughs> Why not? I mean, the brand split doesn't matter apparently. But, so after this promo, speaking of Bianca Belair, the main event. Well, let's back let's backtrack a little bit because WWE blew their proverbial load because we we got the video promos of who's going to be in the second Invitational match for the United States Championship, and they telegraph who the fuck's winning that one because we got video promos from Rey Mysterio, Cameron Grimes, and Sheamus, and then the fourth participant, LA Knight, comes out to cut the promo live. And I'm like, WWE, you just telegraph who's winning next week. That's, mm. I mean, we knew LA Knight was going to win, but damn, you you just told us who's winning next week. And then I'm going to be upset about it. And I'm not upset. And I'm not upset about it, but then I can also see WWE, like, pulling some fuckery and LA Knight doesn't win next week, and then I'm going to be upset. If LA Knight does not win next week, I will actually be pissed. That's and I, the Vince McMahon thing, right? Gosh let dang it. Make them think this and let them think they're smart, but I'm in charge. I'll do what I want. I want then. this guy to win because he makes my dick happy. <laughs> Go back. <laughs> No. Almost kills the Undertaker again, even though Undertaker's retired. <laughs> I don't know. I still can't get over that you called he blows a quad. <laughs> that sh. <laughs> Oh my god. I, yeah. Let's it, go to that one. We had predictions set for WrestleMania when me and Mikey were there. And we had a stuff for like, what are your like for fun predictions that like probably would never happen? And John somehow predicted that Shane McMahon was going to be there and get hurt. And I had all, all my picks on the roofs, and then I always have like a wild card or like bonus section. It's like, here's crazy things that may or may not happen. And the crazy section was. Shane O'Mac returns, probably gets hurt. <laughs> and that's what happened. I might have even said quad. Like yep. <laughs> maybe the quad. And then all of a sudden, 
As soon as it happened, because while we were there live, the rest of our Biconics buds were watching it from home, and literally in our group text message, in all caps, Professor's like, I called it! What the fuck? I was, I was, like, Dying. Nostradamus on us, man. It was insane. It's... Man, I wish I had that power for not wrestling. I would uh, love to do that for <laughs> anything else in my life. Oh, it's like, let me just casually predict, uh, you know, March Madness tournament to win a couple million dollars. Exactly. Let me, you know... Pick a, pick a yeah. That's, that's not I, yeah. I mean, you make some million dollars and we can all go out to WrestleMania every year together at John's private mansion. That would, I swear to God, you guys. Honestly, in my recent memory, LA Knight has been so over with the universe just because of how charismatic he is. Yeah. If they do not have him face Austin Theory and he does not take this title off of Austin Theory I honestly think I will see the internet riot there will be pitchforks there like and I don't mean that like lightly I legit think that it would be so bad for business if LA Knight does not take that title off because the bigger question, the bigger question then for me and this is sort of now like we're talking about Saddam stuff who's in charge of Smackdown right now the Blade. Is it Triple Is it Triple H doing what the fans and what he thinks is right, building these things? Or is it Vince McMahon meddling, saying, I'll let you get away with it, but here's my opinion, and he's still going to do the pissing contest out. You can do whatever you want, but you can't do it. Ultimate, yeah, ultimately, we still have three weeks till SummerSlam, so I, we have, I hate the term, but we have to see how it plays out on the television shows. And ultimately, the ultimate final exam is going to be at SummerSlam with what the final matches end up being and who ends up winning said matches. Because right now, SummerSlam is coming to, like, this is like a tri the end of a trimester test because from WrestleMania to SummerSlam is like the next big chunk of storytelling and everything. And it started off okay. I mean, Backlash... The st Backlash was hella fun, and Backlash is probably the best pay-per-view post-WrestleMania between this period of time. And we talked about it in length of how amazing that Puerto Rico show was. Not to not to give away the end of the year stuff, but when, when we talk about our favorite pay-per-views or what were they, my 1 and 1A one is WrestleMania Day 1 and Backlash are right there. WrestleMania Day 2, not a uh, I mean, we still have a whole six months, so that might change because we still got a whole. B but summer, summer slam, summer slam is going to be a big test because depending on who ends up on the final card and who wins is going to, because between summer slam, the next gap is going, the next trimester it that ends with Survivor Series, which. By the way, we got it announced when it is. It's in November, but we didn't get the War Games moniker, so if they did away with War Games, I'm actually going to be kind of sad. <laughs> can, can we get Great Balls of Fire back? That was... You know what? The name was stupid, but if you looked at the paper, the card for the actual pay-per-view, that pay-per-view was fucking phenomenal. I thought it was great. That's Braun great. Strowman versus Roman Reigns in that ambulance match was so good. <laughs> And Samoa Joe murdered everyone. It was great. <laughs> what about NXT? NXT Great Balls of Fire. I mean, why not? But I'm, I'm rewatching this LA Knight promo. They they gotta do something. He is so pull the trigger. Pull the trigger. You have to. He's wearing the he's wearing the throwback almost Hulk Hogan shirt. And and it's it's hilarious. the LA Knight first where the dude's been in like everything. You <laughs> he's a he's been in TV shows, car commercials. It is amazing. There's, there's a, WWE did a workout video about that like a few years He was ago. in the Triple H workout video. <laughs> yeah, and Triple H goes, you guys listen to the next one? You guys hear Ellen? I go, yeah. <laughs> it is the thing of beauty, and I love it. But, yeah. Have you seen the clip of The Rock owning him on that talk show? <laughs> Have you seen this, Mini? I haven't. Oh, it's fantastic. It's this. It's the most beautiful bump set spike. It doesn't matter that I've seen. And LA Knight walks right into it and is embarrassed he walked right it is. Yeah, so. Well, I don't want to. So this the, the main event. Like, I don't want to say it was not amazing because, you know, the match portion of it, 
was actually pretty was pretty fun. There was a cu there was a couple of clunky spots in there, but I was enjoying it. But then as soon as we cut to the camera shot of EO and Bailey coming in and Bailey like overreacting, like pointing to people I have my ticket, and then not even like two minutes later, Charlotte comes in with her ticket from the other side of the arena and they kept cutting back between the match and then EO and Bailey and Charlotte and kept going back between that trifecta of things. I'm like, uh some fuckery is gonna happen, isn't it? And sure enough there was some fuckery. <laughs> I think the, the joke is spent on the I bought a ticket. I'm allowed to be here. Why would like Charlotte Flair and Bailey and she'll have to buy a ticket to a wrestling show when that's, they're the performers of the wrestling that's the, show? That's the joke that doesn't make sense to me. And it's a loophole that I'm like, okay, you kind of worn this out. And, and, <laughs> and we all know what it takes to get into a wrestling show. Why the fuck does she carry her briefcase into the into security? <laughs> and how does security not realize and notice that you're here, your face is right there on the promo for the thing? So it's like, and why would a wrestler spend that much money on a ringside ticket? Because those motherfuckers ain't cheap. So let's, let's talk about the finishing sequence, and then this is where I'm really going to go I off. Say, I will say, Bianca sold the fuck out of that spear. Yes. So the finisher, so... Ba Bianca gets Asuka out of the ring and not her best KOD, but she plants Asuka with the KOD onto the announcer's table. And then this is where all hell breaks loose because Bailey and Eos get in. Also, I know it's not the ref's fault, but like there was the timing of like realizing that there might be a potential cash in was like out of the. Well, okay. So, I yeah. Bailey. I think Bailey's messed that up every time. So, yeah. So even this one, I'm gonna look at. I can pull it up right now. Even this one was like, I'm catching it. In. So, ap yeah. So, in. yep. So after Bianca gives the KOD to Oscar on the table, then EO and Bailey come in, and so EO and Bailey are getting up in Bianca's face, and then Bianca is like, start. Bianca kind of takes out Bailey and EO. Well, she's about to, and then she's about to get her butt whipped because two on one. Then Charlotte Flair runs in and starts beating up Bailey and EO. And then EO is standing in front of Bianca. Charlotte tries to spear EO. EO gets out of the way, spears Bianca, and oh my gosh, we have a DQ finish. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> At least it wasn't your normal DQ. Though. But I hate this. Spicier. <laughs> I like that we kind of earned it. Sure. Uh, uh, DQ finishes are sort of the flavor of the month right now. Even at the indie promotion I went through the other night, there was a DQ finish. Did, did, and the did, audience did not understand. <laughs> Did you guys see when they cut the Bailey and Eo Sky at the ringside? There's a girl like, a little bit farther back that turned and saw Bailey, and her eyes went, "Who?" Uh, That's. I was like, I was like Me too, kid. So Me too. the DQ, yeah. So the DQ gets called, and then things kind of get out of control here because then everyone starts fighting. Bailey, like it took too long, but Oscar misted Bailey, and I was like. That was kind of clunky too. He was so mad at that. Like that was a that was somebody dropped some communication ball right there because you had this peak moment. Yo, Sky is getting the turnbuckle. That's what I was referencing a little bit earlier. It was sort of like, cash it in. I'm not sure if Bailey's trying to get Oscar's attention. Do it now. Get the face, goddammit. Like she, yeah. She's it's getting... taking too long, and then just like when it happens, I'm like, the effect of it has worn off. <laughs> like. Uh... And then we end SmackDown, so it's like Bianca's laid out, Charlotte's laid out, EO's consoling Bailey, Asuka's laughing maniacally as she's going up the ramp, and that's how SmackDown ends. EO is screaming, Stop. <sighs> I, she would scream some more Japanese out of I want them to, I need another segment where the two of them just talk shit about each other in Japanese. That was the oh, best, yeah. that was a beautiful thing when it happened. Can we get a Kiri to Zara to come on as a translator? Oh my gosh, that'd be hilarious, but let's, Let's dissect this main event because, like, I, mm, uh, I'm trying to be professional, but I'm like the rage, the rage is still there, and it makes me upset because, what the fuck are we doing with the SmackDown Women's Division? You threw basically pretty much all the women you got right now into one storyline. And it's overcrowded. It's so bloated. Too many people. It, I can tell that there are too many cooks in this kitchen. You know. I'm just like, I, yeah. This match for me is in two halves because, again, they put a commercial right in the middle of it. 
Uh, and the match was great. I thought Belair and Oscar were doing everything they needed to do. I don't know how soon they knew what this ending was going to be because there was a little bit of waiting for the cues, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I jumped over the barrier, which means I have to go now. You're doing this thing, which means I have to go bum. So that was a little uh, clunky is a word I use a lot because it works and that's what I'm going to stick with. So that was unfortunate. But I don't blame them because I get the feeling that this was meddling. This was someone who was like, hey, we're going to do this thing. Let's pad this all up here. Let's do it like that. So the women are like, okay, I guess so. That's, the, that's what it feels like. Because this is the only reason that promo is that we bookend the show with this is because of that random promo at the beginning. Hey, we're doing this. Okay, let's say this so this makes sense later. And it, it didn't hit all it could have sold a little better but yeah they left a lot of momentum in the middle of this in my and you're angry you're so angry <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think I think I'm just fresh I think I'm frustrated and I think here's the reason why I'm frustrated because now if this was the only product that I watched like main roster WWE I feel like I still would be frustrated but I don't think as much the problem and the reason why I'm so frustrated is because and I will throw AEW into this mix too for some reason people have a hard time booking the women's division properly and in WWE and AEW you have so many talented women and you have a lot of women you can use, but when it comes to the writing of the storylines and executing the feuds, unless they are championship storylines, most of the time the B and C storylines for women are just complete garbage. But in this they're, case, they're, they're like this. Ex <laughs> exactly. And so we'll stick with WWE and then I'll expand it. So. SmackDown right now is having a hard time building out what this match is going to look like for the WWE Women's Championship at SummerSlam. I'm looking at Raw, and I'm just like, Raw's no better because there's also Chicanery and Tom Fullery over there. But from a narrative standpoint, it makes sense. Like, Raquel and Rhea are feuding a little bit. Like, we're getting those interactions, and that makes sense. Rhonda, you have a secondary women's storyline. Rhonda and Shayna is happening. Like, that also is making a lot of sense. And right now, SmackDown doesn't have a secondary women's storyline because you throw, you're throwing all of your... I mean, you kind of have one now with Bailey and Shotzi, but I'm just like... It hasn't developed enough because yeah, you have one that started at the same day, as you, but they're not even finished with that storyline. You're gonna put this storyline in there, and I, I think you're right. My gut tells me, and this makes me sad, is that on the next few SmackDowns, it's gonna be that sort of madness of it, it's Charlotte Flyers, Bianca Belair, oh, Oscar's here, oh, Bailey's coming with the kids, is EO coming down the everyone's in the ring all at once again. It makes Right, and then over in AEW too, like Tony Storm is your women. Tony Storm is your women's champion, but like that execution. This is going to be a hot take. The best booked women's decision, and I could say this because I'm the only one who reviews the damn product. Impact Wrestling's women's division, their knockout division, is the best booked division, because. Honestly, you really, really should. It, not to review it, but at least if you want to see good store, like booking for both men and women's division, watch Impact. Because let me just, let me break it down to you. We had three women's matches on their pay-per-view yesterday. Three? That's more than two. That's more than one at AEW. We had a six-woman tag match. And this is the beauty part. And this was on the pre-show. It was still good. You had Jody Threat and the Death Dolls of Jessica and Courtney Rush taking on Giselle Shaw, Savannah Evans, and Jay Vidal. So we had, not only did we have these five women, but they were mixing it up because there was a man involved in this match and like the cross gender fighting was great. Then you had such a fucking fantastic tag team championship match between, for the women's tag team championships. And Masha Slamovich and Killer Kelly are fucking phenomenal. Go watch that match. And then Trinity versus Deanna for the Impact Knockouts Championship, where Trinity won. I will be an Impact stand, even though we're reviewing SmackDown. But that's my fuck. This is where my rage is building. I was just like, you can book the women's division in WWE like that. 
if you book secondary and tertiary storylines. But SmackDown right now is throwing all of your top women into one storyline, and it's just muddying the waters a little bit. And it makes me frustrated because all these women are talented, but they're just being thrown together. My rant is over, because if I go on, we'll be here for a bit. <laughs> no, no, I, think, I think that's a perfect way to end it. Like, that's where the state of women's wrestling is still a question mark in WWE land, and it's a mess, because it's too many, in my opinion, old white dudes trying to write for young women of color, and it's a mess. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. <laughs> so you're not doing them any favors. You're, you're, you're not making it a priority. I don't know why WWE is so afraid to, like, try... Like, th this could have been a simple fix. Like, you still could have had the match, but EO... This is what I think they should have done. And in my opinion, this is how it should have been. I think that you can... All the women that are involved, you just separate them out into three different... You can have three different storylines. Here, let me tell you how you can make this work. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to say my piece. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <laughs> really quickly, your main storyline should be Asuka versus Io. Like, if you're going to make Asuka heel, make Io the face. And, like, I listen, I'm going to disagree with our favorites over at Well Culture and Wrestle Talk, but having the baby face, like, tell the champion when they're going to cash in, I think is great because there's, like, I'm cashing it in here. You have X amount of weeks to prepare because I'm going to beat your ass when we get there. Like that, because Big E kind of did that, and that worked. <laughs> right. So that's your main storyline. Your secondary storyline doesn't even need to be the championship. Just have Bianca and Charlotte go at it because they're mad at each other for the other screwing the other out of their championship. And so they can fight a blow-off match. And then your tertiary match... You know, with EO being involved with Asuka in the title feud, Shotzi's out here wrecking havoc on Bailey's life, and then you have that three women storylines on SmackDown. There. Bam. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Minnie. I appreciate it. Overall, let's Yeah. <laughs> oh, just just you wait until I get I get security clearance to actually add my own sound. Lord help us. We will. How do I request permission to do this? Anyway, uh, we'll talk about that after that. All right, let's give our final thoughts for this week's SmackDown. <laughs> How many minis was this worth? Out so of out, of, out of 10 minis, uh, it's, uh, the bloodline brings it down a little bit. The ending obviously makes it a little, uh, yeah, you could have done more. I think what's what heartbreaking, like we're talking about, is there's so much potential. Right? You could do so much more, but then you just kind of throw it um, I am it's in the five, five, six minis out of ten. It was more enjoyable to watch. I was more engaged for sure. We saw the LA night. There were some matches in there that made sense. We got the Street Profits and Bobby Lashley in there. So there's some stuff to look forward to in here. Um, I, I, I think I'm somewhere in that. Okay, yeah, fine. Fine. It was fine. <laughs> That's where I'm at. Uh, I'm in the same boat, like five. Four and a half, five minis. Four and a half minis. Four and a half minis. Half four and a half out of five, yeah. Half a mini. <laughs> so, it was definitely a lot better than last week. Some stuff to look forward to, but there was a lot of miscues and a lot of stuff that bogged it down as well. So, Mikey has to use the blue ball scale. Mikey, how many blue balls out of balls would you get this one? I mean, if we're going to rate that out of ten, I mean... <laughs> no, I mean... Well, I knew what I signed up for. If we're doing this out of balls. I'm going to give this... I'm going to give this a solid five and a half blue balls out of ten. Five and a half blue balls? Five and a half blue balls out of ten. That's yeah. My reasoning is is, is that while it, what, the Bloodline was stuff was not as egregious as it was last week, because Lord knows that was... Oof. It was... I'm, a, I'm not going to lie. It was a lot of fun listening and editing to it. I was like, I feel them on this, but... The Bloodline stuff was not as egregious. I like it when they just let Jay go off and the whole segment was only 10 minutes, so it wasn't as bad. But my frustrations lie because we're scrambling to get... SmackDown is scrambling right now to figure out what their side of the brand is going to do for SummerSlam. So if there was no communication, 
like the invitational like from a narrative standpoint they didn't set it up properly and it had to be afterwards where i had to do research to figure out why they're doing this like there was nothing like in terms of like in the wwe world for that like why it was happening the overcrowded of the women's division is kind of like going all over the place because you have five different women stuck in this one storyline and i was like damn is this money in the bank 2.0 oh there's no ladder match at the end of this whatever all right it's fine um let's see yeah the uh, the video also one more thing i don't need no more video packages i was like we're not stupid you guys like i watched last week then again, you know, you're catering to your casuals who may not watch every single week. But I watched last week. You don't need to recap every single thing. It even come off as catering. Go ahead. Like 15 minutes long. Just make them like, hey, really quick. Here's what happened last week. Done. I'm of the opinion that, yeah, I'm of the opinion recap should be used to further the storyline. Like Edge versus Grayson Waller didn't really need a recap because Edge was nowhere near this show. And then we didn't need a recap at the 45 minutes of the bloodline last week because Jay pretty much told us, recapped it for us during his promo the first couple minutes anyways. And, and we're, we're making our audience... We're they think we're stupid. They think we're stupid. <laughs> like they're playing it doesn't take much to pull up your phone and go, what happened last week? Or what I am mean, I watching? they were in Carolina. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, and again, I mean... Are we still in Canada? No, we're in Carolina for this, right? Yeah, we're in the United States for this. <laughs> we're in Flair, yeah. We're in Flair country. And that didn't even play a part. <laughs> no, and the pop for Flair country was not what Charlotte thought it was. I think that the, the pro, they have people they got to pay. And it's sort of like you're on the payroll, you're, you're putting all these cuts together. Give me, give me a 5, a 10, a 15, and a 20. And they're always going to pick the ones that save space. So I kind of get that, but I'm over it too. I think it's just filler right now. It doesn't do anything, and that's like, that could unfair. have been a whole another match they could have put on the card. Yeah. It could have been a women's match that made sense. Or yeah, they could have made the women's matches longer, or something that made sense, or a whole another just another match that pushed another storyline they should do with the 1,900 people that are on SmackDown they ain't doing nothing. Yeah, yeah. Outside of the bloodline, and then the smiles of the. Where's Austin Creed? I. I, th I think the new day is coming back really relatively soon, but yeah, no Austin Creed. I'm just, angry. I'm just it, it's it's interesting, and we bitch about it, but we're gonna be back next week to review it again. <laughs> we'll, back. we'll watch it again. We'll sit through it, so you don't have to. Or if you want to listen to us, we absolutely can. Uh, I'll do the tag out for this. I am the professor. This is Vinny, and this is Mikey. This has been the SmackDown review for seven. Oh God, math. 14. <laughs> 14. Thank you. My God. July went through like ridiculously fast. Uh, be sure to check out everything else we have here at the Vibe Tribe, including the Biconics Wrestling Podcast, where we get together almost once a month. We try to, anyway. We'll talk about topics and wrestling. We're reviewing everything, as you can tell from this review, because we're using it as guideposts for everything else that we're talking about. Be sure to check out those and all of the D&D podcasts we have going on. Lots of fun stuff on all of those. Uh, you can find us on the socials. Mikey, we're everywhere. We're on the Instagram. We're on the threads now. We're on the threads now. We're on the Twitters. We're on the YouTubes. We're almost in the YouTube algorithm. Every now and then, one of our videos pops, and we get very excited. <laughs> so we're back. Um, anything else we got to plug? Or does that feel comfy? That's a roundup, right? Like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Yes. <laughs> But until no, nope. so but until next time, this has been your SmackDown review. We will see you next week for another interesting episode of SmackDown, hopefully. But until then, adios and sayonara. Yes. <laughs>